everyone, I'm Jennifer Zarate and you're watching CRN TV. My sincere hope and for as we go through the rest of 2021 is that this doesn't just get forgotten, right? That this doesn't become something that, oh, that, 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 that was something at the end of 2020. You know, that was a horrible year, wasn't it? Okay, that's behind us. No, no, there's messages here. And I think there's opportunities for channel partners in a big way. CrowdStrike, the Sunnyvale, California-based endpoint security giant, said the suspected hackers behind the SolarWinds attack attempted to hack the company through a Microsoft reseller's Azure account several months before it was notified on December 15, 2020. Microsoft told CRN that if a customer buys a cloud service from a reseller and allows the reseller to retain administrative access, then a compromise of reseller credentials would grant access to the customer's tenant. This abuse of access would not be a compromise of Microsoft services themselves, according to the company. So, Peter, from the standpoint of a reseller, what steps could they take to prevent someone from stealing their credentials or impersonating a legitimate user in their systems? Well, this speaks to um, privilege escalation or implied privilege, privilege escalation, meaning um, there's inheritance, right? So the, the problem of inheritance from a reseller perspective is um, when you have these contractual vehicles in place, if you're a service provider or your platform service provider and, um, and you have your customer base, uh, when, when, you, when Microsoft addresses, you gave us access, administrative access, thereby there is inheritance of a privilege account to give access. So it's not necessarily a breach, and in this case, it's not a breach. It is a escalation of a, an established inheritance of access. So um, that's really the cautionary tale here is to look at the overall governance of identity access management. How about from the standpoint of a vendor, Sam? So um, this is a this is a, a risk assessment problem. It's a threat vector analysis problem. It's getting you got to get the right tools in place and then you got to be looking for when they're broken or violated. Now, let's say hackers are able to successfully impersonate a user in the solution provider system. What types of internal controls does the solution provider need to have to minimize the damage to their customers? There's two parts to this. I think, first of all, depending on what, this, what, the, what the offering that they have is, um, they should be trying to do that leaning in thing. Right, so they should have solutions that can address all those parts of the MITRE ATT&CK framework that we referenced earlier. They should have tools like EDR in place. They should be able to find those changes in the subtle behaviors in the systems of the customer. And then afterwards, the second part is how do you minimize the damage? Well, that's a big strategy. You've got to have the notion of resilience, the notion of anti-fragility, that one compromise doesn't compromise everything and that you can bounce back quickly. So most solution prior do, they do a pretty good job um, around uh, locking down or putting guardrails around the access management aspects of it and also the identity uh, aspect of it. But in certain cases, when you have inheritance uh, challenges where you just literally, it's like getting a suitcase with credentials and passing it along and no one's really done anything wrong. It's just um, the, the attacker by way of just getting in through uh, through a certain exploitation. In case when you're talking about solar winds, it, it, it pretty much was a tunnel in and around all sorts of places that you could just inherit naturally um, these access points. So that's really the cautionary tale is to look at um, the root cause of that and have early uh, detection and monitoring and, and pervasive visibility around that, put that guardrail in. And how can solution providers demonstrate to their customers that their own internal security measures are enough to keep them safe? I think a certain degree of transparency is really needed from a solution provider's perspective. I'll give you an example. Um, you know, for if I'm providing a solution, I'm also wanting to be transparent by which saying, look, we practice uh, what we what we preach, and we also practice what we're, we're we're providing as a solution. And so that's going to be really critical going forward. And it doesn't have to be an exact one for one match. I'm going to give you because every customer is going to be unique, and the solutions are going to be very tailored to the customer. But the tenets, the core foundational or table stakes of security, should be met, and and even more so. Um, higher, a higher bar set. So I think uh, the level of transparency and, and to give a certain, not just the comfort level, but to know that 
um, your solution provider is also taking care of their own home, right? Their own home turf, uh, as much as they're going to care about, if not more, the solution that they're going to provide through the channel to the end customer.